In this video, we're going to look at how to develop an abstract, or sometimes referred to as high-level, finite state machine to achieve a desired goal. For this example, our goal is to create what is sometimes referred to as an odd parity checker. Parity is a technique that is used to verify the correct transmission of a stream of data. And in odd parity, it means that the of the data received, that there should be an odd number of ones. And if there are not an odd number of ones in the data received, then there was some error in the transmission. And while with this information alone we can't correct it, we can at least identify that an error has occurred. And so an example, these two waveforms give an idea of how this parity circuit works. So we have four inputs. The data input, which is the data we're trying to check the parity for. A start bit that says, that the next number of cycles is going to be have the data that we want to check, a num input which says how many bits of data we're expecting, and then the clock that most circuits would have. And then we have a single output which is valid, which will be true at the end or after the data has been transmitted if the parity was correct. So if there were an odd number of ones over all of the bits transmitted. So in the diagram on the left, we're showing a case where when the start bit is asserted, num input is 5, meaning that we're expecting 5 data bits. And over the next 5 clock cycles, we receive 5 data bits. These data bits are a 1, a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 0. So in this case, if we were to count up, we'd see that we have 3 1s, which is an odd number of 1s. And so this was a valid transmission, so valid goes 1. In the case on the right, it's similar where num input is 5 and we have the start bit asserted and then for the data we have a 1, a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. And so in this case we have an even number of 1s. We have two 1s and so this was not a valid transmission in the sense that we did not have an odd number of 1s and so valid remains low. And so now our goal is to create an abstract finite state machine that would achieve this functionality so that in the future we might be able to turn it into some hardware. And so to start with, we're going to kind of have a base state where we start with on reset and where basic things happen. So this, re or this state would happen first off after reset. Within this state, we're going to do a few things. We're going to set some counter that says how many data bits we've seen to zero because we're not counting anything. We're not re expecting to receive any data. We're also going to have something that's going to keep track of the number of ones we've seen so we can eventually figure out if we had an odd number of ones or not. So we're going to have something that I'm going to refer to as one count, which we're also going to reset to zero at this point. And then to prepare for if we receive a start bit, we're going to take the num input input and store it into some local variable n. And there are some different ways we might be able to do this, but this is the approach I'm going to take here. And then the first interesting thing that could happen would be we'd receive a start signal and so if we, want to, if we receive a start signal, we want to start counting the data after this. So we're going to get a start, or we're going to get a state saying that we're counting our data. And on a start signal, we're going to come into this state. And then so long as we're not at the end of our count, so so long as our current count is less than however high we're counting, we're going to stay in this state. And while we're here, each cycle we're going to increment the number of data bits that we've gotten, and we're also going to keep track of the number of ones that we have. So for one count, we're going to add whatever the data is. So if the data is a one, we're going to add a one, and if the data is a zero, we're going to add a zero. And then from here, we're going to keep doing this until count equals n, and then depending, or once this happens, we have two possibilities. Either the one count is odd, meaning that we had a correct case and we want to assert valid, or one count is even, meaning we had an incorrect data transmission and we don't want to assert valid. And so I'm going to start with the case where we didn't have a correct transmission. So if the count, if we've reached our max count and we have an even number, so our one count is even, then we're just going to go back to our default state and valid is going to be zero. If on the other hand, the count equals n and we have an odd number of ones, then we want to go to a state where we're going to assert valid for a cycle. So if we're here and our count is n and our one count is odd, then we want to 
assert our valid signal. From here, then, we want to figure out how we're going to get this started again. So it's possible that we could receive another start bit after this and then have to go back to count again. So if that's the case, we also want to get the new number input and reset our counter. So we could also want to make n equal to whatever num input is. And we can also reset our counters at this case, just so we're ready for another valid signal should it occur. And so if a start happens, then we can go back and start counting again. Otherwise, if start isn't true, then we can go back to our default waiting state and wait for start to happen again, and we'll still be collecting whatever num input is so we're ready with the current value of num input in n whenever start is asserted. And so this would be an abstract finite state machine that would achieve our odd parity checker functionality.